As humans, we love heroes. And as Christians, we all certainly have biblical characters that we admire and look up to when it comes to their journey in faith. But as we think of some of these characters as giants of faith, we have to remember that all of the glory, all of the praise, and all of the honor should really go to the Lord. There's only one hero in the Bible, and that's Jesus Christ. The Bible is God's story, and no one else's. Yes, others were used by him, but no one else should be glorified but the Lord. So let's talk about David. The small shepherd boy became a giant slayer. But the truth is, David did not achieve the victory over Goliath, but God gave him the victory. The truth is that God directed the stone, and he put enough power behind that stone so that it was powerful enough to take Goliath out. The victory was God's, not David's. So who's the real hero of the story? Let's take a look at Gideon. That mighty man of valor defeated a Midianite army of thousands with only 300 men. Did Gideon achieve the victory? No. Gideon didn't even want to go. Gideon cowered in a cave and commanded that God give him signs in order to prove that he would help him. And in the end, Gideon was victorious. But it wasn't because he fought so skillfully. It was not because he was a brilliant general. But it was all because the Lord's hand was over him and over the 300 men in the army that he fought with. Now, let me ask you, do you remember Joshua? Do you remember how God gave him and the Israelites the victory over the massive city of Jericho? And all they had to do was march around and shout. They didn't lift a finger. Is that victory Joshua's? <laughs> no, that victory belongs to God. In all these cases, we can admire how God worked through David, but we should never praise David. We have to praise the Lord. We can admire how God used Gideon, but we should never praise Gideon. We ought to praise the Lord. So you see, there are great men and women of faith in the Bible, but we have to remember that these people did not have power. God had the power. These people had no authority. God was the one, and he is the one, who has all authority. These people didn't do anything except say yes to God's call. In fact, most of them had to be dragged into following God's call, and they went kicking and screaming. Think of Jonah running away. Think of Moses. Moses made so many excuses not to answer God's call to take on Pharaoh. Now, we must not fall into the trap of glorifying the vessel over the one who made the vessel. We must never glorify the one who was used, but rather the one who did the using. God is the giver of victory. God is the giver of life. And God is the giver of all good things. Philippians 2, verses 9 through 11. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so with all these things in mind, let us go to the one who deserves all the glory. Father, only you deserve to be praised. Only you hold the power. And only you are able to accomplish mighty things. Who else but you, Master? can be worshiped and glorified. 
There is none but you, King Jesus. Dear God, your word in Isaiah 42 verse 8 says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Lord, rid us of every idol. Father, open our eyes so that we can recognize and discern anything and everything that tries to place itself above you in our lives. And Father, we ask that you would forgive us because at times we can so easily become consumed. We become consumed by our problems when something's going wrong. It can consume our thoughts and emotions. But Lord, I pray that you teach us to focus on you and not our problems. Lord, teach us to run and praise you instead of focusing on our circumstances. May we be a people who magnify you and no one else and nothing else. Lord, when a problem comes into our lives, help us to see that the enemy wants to use that to distract us. And so we cannot be so focused on that thing. We should not be found speaking continually on that thing because that then magnifies the problem. But Lord, may we be a people who are devoted to focusing on and magnifying the precious name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 72, verses 17 through 19. His name shall endure forever. His name shall continue as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. So Lord, we desire the name of Jesus Christ to be uplifted in our lives. May the name of Jesus Christ be magnified in our homes. Lord, let our lips and our hearts only sing praises to you, King Jesus. And Father, I pray that our hearts would not be so focused on seeking signs and wonders or miracles, but rather let it be our desire that you would be lifted up high and glorified in all that we do. If we should experience victory, Lord, we praise you. If we should experience trouble and hardship, Father, we still give you the praise. Regardless of what our external circumstances may be, I pray that our internal posture is always going to be one of praise and one that seeks to bask in your presence, Lord. Father, we pray and declare your word that says in Psalm 19, verse 14, May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You're a God who brings peace beyond all human understanding. You're a God who brings joy unspeakable. You're a God who brings restoration and healing. And Father, we cannot get by in this life without you. There's no way we can survive the storms of life without you. So, Lord, we seek to dwell in your presence forever. We praise you, dear Lord, for you are magnificent. You are merciful and just. You are the righteous God. You are the true and holy one. And I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, we thank you for hearing this prayer because it's in Jesus' name that we pray, and we give you all the glory. Amen.